Hello friends, today I would like to talk to you about a performance by Tuba Skinny of a lovely piece of music called Chocolate Avenue. Now, I think they got this from a Clarence Williams recording that was made in about 1933, and when Clarence Williams issued it, it seems as though he allowed people to think that he was the composer, but I have heard that fans of Herman Blount who was at the time himself a very young uh, and up-and-coming composer, had sent this music in about 1929 or 1932, Clarence Williams, uh, having himself composed it, and that probably Clarence Williams sat on it for three years and then released the tune as if it was his own. Well, whatever the truth may be, it is a very lovely piece of music. Tuba Skinny play it in the key of E flat and if you want to hear a really clear beautiful studio recording of it then um, I can tell you that Tuba Skinny put it on their CD that was called Tupelo Pine that came out in I think 2017 so if you want to hear it beautifully played and very clear then listen to that but otherwise I'm going to show you uh, and analyse a video that I made when I was in New Orleans of the band playing this tune. And uh, right at the end of my video, I will let you watch the entire tune performance uninterrupted. Now, many fans tell me that they can't read music and they know nothing about music. Um, so I'm going to try to help. I think you'd need to have a bit of a technical understanding to appreciate what's going on. So I'm trying to put in as simple a form as possible uh, the way this tune is structured, and I hope that will help you to follow it when you're watching the performance later on. So the first thing is to say that it was very commonplace, and still is really, for tunes to be written in 32 bars. A bar is four beats, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, so that would be two bars. And many of those tunes, particularly in the first half of the 20th century, ha have a chorus which is 32 bars long. And quite often within those 32 bars, they are divided up into four groups of eight. And even within those four groups of eight, there is a definite structure. And that is certainly the case in Chocolate Avenue, because the first, the second and the fourth groups of eight are pretty much the same. But there is a contrasting melody in the third group. So what we do is we call the first group A1, and then the next eight bars will be A2. And then the third melody is the third section, if you like, is called B. And then finally, we come back to the first melody we call that A3, and that's how we play right through the tune. Now, I've tried to put this onto a clipboard, so I hope this helps a bit. If you look at this, the melody of Chocolate Avenue begins da, 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 and it goes on with other things. But those are the first four bars, so I'm calling that A1. And then when they've played those eight bars, they play them more or less again. Da, 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 da. Da, da. We'll call that A2. We're now halfway through the tune. Then they come to a contrasting section that I will call B. And this is where, as you see, the tune kind of goes up a ladder. Da, 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 and so on. And then when they've played those, those eight bars, we, we go back to the beginning melody again and we play it, we'll call it A3 this time. So the tune will finish. Da 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 and so on to the end. So that's where you get your 32 bars. Now, in the case of this performance of Chocolate Avenue, they're going to play right through it four times. And as they do so, they will vary which instrument is leading and what is going on and how they're interpreting things. I'll talk about that when we come to it. But if you think about it, they're playing... 32 bars four times. So what does that come to? They're going to play your 128 bars of music. Exactly. There is no introduction before the thing starts and there's no 
little finishing off bit that we call a coda afterwards. They just end on the last note. So you're going to have 180, 28 bars of music. And we're going to start off by listening to the band playing the beginning of this first bit so you can hear how that melody goes, the A melody, da, 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 and so on. And that is what we're going to watch in this first clip. Well, what actually goes on in that uh, A section of this tune? I've not been able to obtain any sheet music, so I've had to tinker on my keyboard to try to work it out. And the melody seems to be, it's got a little run up. That's known as the anacrusis, the little bit that goes before the proper tune begins. And then the first beat of the first main bar is this one. So that's the first bar, second bar, and then third bar. You might expect it again for the fourth bar, but you don't get that. You actually get... So now to work out some chords that would go with this. It's in the key of E flat, so it's natural enough it begins in E flat with the E flat chord. So... Now, what on earth chord do we need for this next note? Well, I found the best one is G minor, and it's really quite surprising in an E-flat tune to hit G minor, and especially so early in the tune. But here we go. Sounds right, doesn't it? That, that is, in fact, what it is the first time, but then the second time when it goes... What on earth is that? Well, I I tried all sorts of things. I had a real struggle with it. And I eventually decided I like B flat augmented, which is this chord. Isn't that glorious? So the whole tune so far goes like this. E flat chord. G minor. And this time... B flat augmented and so on. So last time of doing it, E flat, G minor, B flat augmented. There we are. Well, this little sequence of four bars with those lovely chords in is played three times, obviously being the A section, it's played three times in every chorus. The band plays four choruses in total, so you're going to get that beautiful sequence 12 times in total in the performance of this tune. So the A section is played twice, and then we move on to the B section, which is the one where we climb up the ladder. Da, 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 da. So let's have a listen now to the B section from this first chorus. I'd like to move on now to the second time that they play through the chorus. Now this time, to make it different, Charlie takes the lead, so he plays an improvisation over A1 and A2, 16 bars, while the others play long harmonising notes in support of him. <laughs> After Charlie has played his two eights, A1 and A2, Craig takes the lead and he plays the remainder of the second chorus, that's to say the B section and then the A3 section. You'll hear him keeping fairly close to the melody and he also is supported by some nice harmonising notes from Charlie and Shay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Craig goes on to finish that second chorus, which brings us to halfway through the tune. And then as they start the third chorus, to again, to give some variety, we have the strings taking the lead over the whole of the A1 and A2 sections, the, the first 16 bars, in other words. And you'll hear some very nice tremolos from Jason. Well, now we come to the B section in this third chorus. And this, you remember, is the section that climbs up the ladder. Da, 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 da. But this time, Tuba Skinny do something really interesting with it. It's a typical Tuba Skinny strategy. They completely ignore that melody, the climbing melody, and they just take the chords that the melody is based on and they play these in a long held harmonizing style. Have a listen to this. This leaves the final section of the third chorus, the final eight bars that we call A3, and this time they give those to Todd to use as a solo. Well, now we have just one more chorus to go and the whole band has got to play this together. And so Shay gives her famous signal, you know, where she swings the cornet round like that, twirls it round so that everybody knows they've all got to join in. Um, so here, here's the little clip of her giving that signal. You'll have to be very sharp and quick if you're going to catch it. Just watch her hands right at the beginning of this clip. Now, as we start this final chorus, naturally we're expecting the A1, da, 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 which I spoke about earlier. But the most amazing thing happens, and this is, to me, uh, the most exciting eight bars in the entire piece, because Shea decides to just work through the chords and ignore the melody altogether. So you won't be hearing da, da, not at the beginning. She's playing much lower down and then going up and down. And she's working around those chords I discussed, uh, E flat for two bars and then the G minor and then leading into that... Um, B flat augmented, and she's improvising around those in a pretty exciting way. Although it's just it's not showing off in any any sense, not using high notes, but it's extremely clever. then play through the A2 and the B section and so finally we arrive at the last eight bars, the A3 for the fourth and final time and here they more or less play the melody nice and purely because they're bringing it to a very gentle, relaxed, rallentando ending. <laughs> Well, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed that and found some of it helpful. And now you can sit back and relax and listen to the entire performance of Tuba Skinny playing Chocolate Avenue. But from me for now, it's bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.